I have some good news. I quit my job. Huh? I've decided to become a comic book artist. I can't waste time at a regular job when I'm meant to create a masterpiece. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to draw illustrations every day. Huh? Are you joking? I'm serious. I want to create a masterpiece like Batman. Well, I know you love comics, but have you ever drawn before? I used to draw comic strips for the class newspaper in elementary school, and it was a big hit. Plus, I always got A's in art until high school. I can't let this talent go to waste. Wait, you've never really drawn a full-fledged comic book, have you? I've never even seen you draw. And even if you start, you'll probably give up after a few days. Drawing every day is impossible, right? You don't understand anything, Addison. I've always drawn. I've always drawn on the wide, empty canvas that is my heart. Can't you see it? My beautiful work. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, it's no wonder. You're not the type to appreciate art. And most of all, you don't have the right face. It's not classy. You look like a dried up otter. Isn't an otter cute? I don't know what happens to them when they dry up. I like otters a lot. You really have no sense of aesthetics. You're not beautiful. You have a dry face as well as a dry heart. Poor thing, all dried out. You're right. I do have dry skin, but the conversation is getting way off track. I don't mind you drawing cartoons, but you don't have to quit your job. I have a great artistic sense, but I'm not good at multitasking. Well, yes. Yesterday, you were so engrossed in watching a cartoon while eating dinner that you spilled the soup all over the table. Addison, that's not a very beautiful analogy. I think this is the limit of your sense. Anyway, I want to put all my talent into comic books. I'm thinking, no, don't just go off and make such an important decision. Even if you really have talent and can draw great comics, that doesn't mean you're going to get paid right away. It's a sign of a mediocre person that you only think about money. As a genius, I don't have the time to worry about such things. Even a genius has to eat, right? Let's talk about it when we get home today, okay? What's the point of talking about it now? I've already submitted my resignation. What? You want to end with that? I mean, what letter of resignation? Are you serious? You're a full-time employee, so if you want to quit, you shouldn't submit a resignation letter, but a request for retirement. It's super embarrassing. You're really meticulous, Addison. I don't care about that stuff. I'm never going back to work again anyway. No, no, it's not normal to suddenly quit a company on the spot. When I said I wasn't coming in tomorrow, he said, don't come back. They didn't try to stop you? What? What was your position at the company? Hmm, I don't know. I haven't been there that long. Huh? You went to work every morning, right? On days when I feel like it, I would sleep in a park. Yeah, like, work is super boring. I had no idea, but I'm surprised you didn't get fired for that. To be honest, I'm a bit shocked. If you're as beautiful as I am, that alone is worth something. There's no way they would fire me, right? Well, maybe a disappointing girl like you needs to work hard, but... Hey, I'm going to ask you again. Did you really quit your job? You're not kidding, right? You're so persistent. You don't understand much, do you? It's really a pity. 
I'm the one who married you, so I'd like you to at least improve yourself a little. You might be interviewed or something as the wife of a genius comic book artist in the future. Would you please study a little more so that you won't embarrass me? I want you to understand what I want without having to tell you. That's impossible. What are you going to do now that you have quit your job? Are you thinking about your future? I'm going to be a big comic book artist. I'm going to have a series in a book or magazine. And it'll be an animated series. And it'll be a big hit. Children all over the world will read my work and have hope. Isn't the comic world really tough? You're 28 years old now, aren't you? You're not taking your future seriously. You say you're a cartoonist, but you've only ever drawn in your head, right? Doesn't that mean you've never created any artwork? No, no, no. Even if it's only in your heart, it's still a great creative activity. It's easy to copy a cartoon that's already finished in your head into a manuscript. You're a realist, but I'm a dreamer. Addison, you're in charge of reality, and I'm in charge of dreams, so I'll draw the comics. Perfect division of labor, don't you think? Wait a minute. So you're saying that you won't work? Just draw comic books? Don't worry. Drawing comic books will become my job in time. If I'm good enough, I could win a Pulitzer Prize in a year or two. Is the Pulitzer Prize for comic books? I don't know, but are you serious? If you're serious about pursuing your dream, I'd like to support you. But I'm worried that it seems a little haphazard. If you're serious, shouldn't you be thinking more seriously about money and your future? At any rate, with your income, we don't have to worry about making a living. I didn't put any money into the house to begin with. Nothing will change. That's true, but then you won't have any money to spend. So, you know, until I make my debut, I'll need some spending money every month. Addison, you said you save 500 bucks every month, right? When I get famous, you won't need to save any money, so give that money to me as my allowance. No, no, no. If you're gonna quit your job, I'm even more worried. So we need to save money. What if something happens to me and I can't work? You have life insurance. Don't say stuff that brings bad luck. I'm the beneficiary, don't worry. I mean, what if we have kids or something? If it's just the two of us, it might not matter yet. But if we have kids, you can't be a dreamer. How many decades are we talking about? We're still young. We don't need kids for now. Ah, are you in a hurry, Addison? You're already over 30, aren't you? If you can't have a baby, we can ask someone else. There are plenty of girls who would want to have my child. After all, I'm going to be a big hit comic book artist. Don't even say that as a joke. Anyway, I'm going to be a cartoonist. You work hard. Oh, don't expect me to do housework just because I'm home. I can't. Go withdraw $18,000. Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? What's wrong? I'm buying a computer. Comics are digital nowadays. You didn't think I was going to draw with a pen on manuscript paper, did you? If it's a computer, we have one, right? I don't use it much, so feel free to use it. A computer like that is no good. It's no good at all. It's too slow. My masterpiece will be ruined if I use that computer. No, no, no. Ours is only about a year old. And it's a pretty good one. It cost about $3,000 because I built it up with specs to make it last as long as possible. Addison, you act like you know what you're talking about, but you're just an amateur. It's just not good enough. That's why you need to withdraw $18,000. $18,000 is too much. So shut up, amateur. I'm buying a full-spec Mac Pro. 
It's gotta be a high-performance PC for creators. No, no, no. That's for creators. Like video and music production, right? You draw comic books, right? You're not making movies, are you? Are you saying that cartoonists are not creators? It's a creative job, so they are creators, right? I'm just saying that there are different kinds of creators. Are you trying to stop me from making comics? Are you trying to shatter my dreams? You're going to curse me for setting sail with a dream? Hopefully, high wave, you will become a hurricane. What's that? I don't understand. Anyway, 18,000 is a lot of money. Even a layman can understand that. It's not expensive. It's not expensive at all. I'm the one who wants it. Aren't you getting cocky lately? You said you wanted to marry me, so I married you. You with the otter face. You lived by the water, and I pulled you up on land and made you human, didn't I? Oh, that sounds like a great line from a comic book. That line is mine, so don't take it. I'm not taking it. Anyway, if you have a problem with it, I'm divorcing you. Don't say that. I was surprised when you suddenly said you'd become a cartoonist. But I'm being supportive. What do you mean by supportive? Were you going to cheer me on? I don't need that. What I need is an environment that satisfies me. And money. That's all you can do for me. Don't say that. It makes me sad. I love you, so I've put up with whatever you've said to me. But when you say things like that... It really makes me want to cry. The point is, you don't want to break up with me, right? Then shut up and go withdraw $18,000. Also, I want to concentrate on my comic books, so rent a separate apartment. I don't care if it's a one-room apartment. With your money, of course. I can't concentrate on my comic books if you're around. Okay, I'll buy a computer, but I can't afford a separate apartment. I won't be around during the day, okay? I can concentrate better at night. I hear that many famous cartoonists are night owls. If that's the case, I'll clear out the room we're using as a storage space and make it into a workroom for you. Wouldn't that be nice? You want me to stay in the storage room? That's impossible. I said a studio is fine, so get it ready. With your income, can't you afford it? We're just using it as a storage room right now, but it's a proper room. It's 100 square feet in size and has air conditioning. So, no thank you. Just rent an apartment. There's no way a genius cartoonist would be crammed into a room like that. He wouldn't be able to draw to his full potential. It's a loss for the whole world. You can't just rent an apartment suddenly. It takes months to sign a contract and move in if it's a proper apartment. And it's not just the rent. The initial cost is quite high. Utilities will also increase, so it's pretty hard. My dreams are at stake, and you say you can't even afford that? If that's the case, I'm divorcing you. It's like you don't understand me at all. I'll ask for alimony too. It's your fault. I won't divorce you. Don't come out and say it just like that. Then rent a room. If it's going to take a while to move in, hurry up and get the paperwork done. Go to the real estate agency on your way home today and sign the contract. And it should be a studio, but no more than a five-minute walk from the bus stop. If you can't do that, I'm divorcing you. Can't I move into the apartment yet? I can't concentrate at all. If I don't become a comic book artist, it's because you're too slow. Right. I think you'd better find an apartment as soon as possible. I'll have you out by the end of the month. Huh? What are you talking about? You said you signed a contract. I'm not going to do it. Why would I sign a contract for a new house for you and your lover you're having an affair with? What do you mean affair? Have you lost your mind? Are you confusing fantasy with reality? 
Do you think I don't know anything? I've been looking into it ever since the day you said you were quitting your job. How suspicious can you be? You suddenly said you were going to be a cartoonist. Did you really think I'd believe you? Well, it was a very convincing performance. I was in the drama club in high school. Addison, what's up? It's me, it's Theo. I'd never cheat on you, would I? What are you mistaken about? I wish I was mistaken. I have plenty of evidence. But you were so brazen. Quitting your job and spending all your daytime with her. And you were spending the money you got for the computer on her. Unbelievable. Where's the proof? Did you hire a detective? What a waste of time. There's no way you could find any evidence. Because I didn't do it. You can't collect evidence that isn't there. It's like a trick out of a detective comic book. The detective was useless, so I gathered the evidence myself. And there's no way an amateur could do that. You're just bluffing. You're right. I didn't find any evidence in a normal investigation. I didn't expect her to be the young girl who lives in the same apartment building as us. It's disgusting, messing with a college girl. The security at our apartment building is so tight, it's impossible for anyone from the outside to get in. No wonder there's no way to find anything, even if there's a detective outside. There's no way. I don't know anything about it. You still think you can get away with that? It's not gonna work. You're lying about having proof, aren't you? Of course you don't have any. That's right. You met at her place so you wouldn't leave any evidence. Apparently, both parents work and come home late. You're saying you even snooped around her house to gather evidence? That's a crime. Evidence gathered illegally is invalid in court. If I did that, I'd be out. But the ones who gathered the evidence were her parents. What are you talking about? That's impossible. How did you know who they were? There's no way you could find out where they live. You're full of nonsense. Oh, that's a good place to start. To put it simply, it's her fault. We're neighbors and I knew some of the families there. And about a year ago, she came to a building association meeting on behalf of her parents. She was promoting her Instagram. I wasn't really interested. But she said she was eager to get more followers, so I just followed her. What does that prove? One day, I was casually looking at Instagram and saw a picture of the watch I bought for you. I checked, and it turns out it's our neighbor's daughter. It just so happens to be the same watch. I can't believe you'd suspect me of cheating on you just because of that. Do you know what you're saying is funny? Do you know what you are saying is also funny? You wanted it for yourself and you forgot about it? That's a rare item, limited to 50 pieces worldwide. Only one came to America, so it's definitely your watch. You're lying. Is that how you found out? That's not all. I checked her Instagram in detail, and there were all sorts of things on there. This is probably what they call dropping hints, I guess. When you're in a secret relationship, like an affair, you tend to want to make these kinds of hints without being too explicit. Well, in her case, maybe she was trying to declare war on me. It seems like you were completely unaware and carefree. <laughs> it's a pity that you got caught because of her. What the hell did she do? So, I talked to her parents... By the way, her dad is a great lawyer. Be prepared. I've decided to hire him for our divorce and to sue for alimony too. No, wait a minute. This is all a misunderstanding. I just wanted to support her dream. She dreams of being a pianist, but her father wouldn't let her go to music school, so she said she needed the money. It was for her dream, so forgive me. That's all a lie. That young lady just failed the entrance exam for a regular music school and went to a regular college. And then, 
She started hanging out with some bad friends in college, and she was short on allowance, so she wanted some money. She confessed everything. What? That's a lie, right? She said she wanted to leave home to pursue her dreams. She doesn't have bad friends. She's not that kind of girl. She's a good, pure girl working hard for her dream. Okay, so that's what your apartment is for. It's so stupid, it makes me cry. Maybe you were just trying to live with her while you were living off me. But you were just using me. But still, you've become pathetic. You've been trying to show off how popular you are, and now you're paying off a college girl to go out with you? Well, I guess it's understandable. You may think you're hot, but you're becoming an old man. I don't know if it's a result of your poor health or your heredity, but you're balding before you're 30. What? I'm still good looking. That's right. It's not too late. You don't want to divorce me, do you? What are you talking about? I'm divorcing you, and of course, I'm going to ask for alimony. Don't say that. You still love me, don't you? I feel the same way. You're really grossing me out. I've already packed your bags, so get the hell out of my house. Also, apart from the alimony, I'm going to charge you for the money you cheated me out of by lying to me about your dreams. No, I didn't lie about being a cartoonist, but I did want to support her dream. So it's not a lie. Then why don't you support her? With the money you've earned. Also, don't ever contact me again because I'm really sick of you. If you cost me any more mental anguish, my alimony bill will go up and up. You'd better get out of here. Then, please talk it over with your lawyer. I firmly demanded alimony and the money he cheated me out of. As for the other kid, I was unsure what to do about her because her parents are acquaintances. But her father offered to pay a substantial amount of compensation. Currently, Theo is working part-time jobs to make ends meet and to pay the alimony. The young lady he was with has also been disowned and has had to quit college. I think they both understood well that if you cheat people, you will be punished. On the other hand, thanks to Theo being gone, I have a lot of leeway in my life. I am very happy to live a free life, both mentally and financially. I would like to enjoy my single life to the fullest for a while. Long time no see, Olivia. This weekend marks the third anniversary of our divorce. Why don't we have dinner together if you want? Huh? Have you finally lost your mind? What? What's with the cold reaction? It's been a while since you heard from me, and it's a dinner invitation. Why aren't you excited about it? Who would have dinner with your ex-husband? And a divorce anniversary? Are you making fun of me? My own sister stealing my husband was the worst day of my life. You have to be kidding me if you call it an anniversary. Don't get mad at me. It's just a little joke of my own. It's been a while since I've heard from you, so I was just relaxing the tension. What? I apologize for saying strange things like our anniversary, but I really want to see you again just once. I believe you enjoy yakitori. I know a great place. Why don't we meet there for the first time in three years? No thanks. Well then, excuse me. What? Wait a minute. You can't just turn me down like that. In case you're wondering, I'm your brother-in-law. What a dreadful attitude you have toward your beloved family. I've never considered you family, and I've cut ties with everyone, including my sister Camilla and my parents, who gave your marriage their blessing. So don't you ever mess with me again. Bye. Well, wait. B please, just listen to me. If you don't like it, we won't have dinner. Please, please. I need to ask you a favor. So please, bear with me. A favor? You haven't visited your parents' house once since you split up with them, have you? Your parents haven't told you about Camilla's illness, have they? Huh? Camilla's illness? 
does she have some kind of serious illness? That's right. She actually has a blood-related disease. Could it be leukemia? Something like that. And you know, for Camilla to be completely healed, the doctor informed me that she requires a bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant? I'd heard about it in TV shows and movies. I never imagined a family member suffering from it. So I wanted to ask you a favor for Camilla as your sister. Can you help her by becoming a donor? Wow, me? I'm sure it's troubling when someone asks you something like that out of the blue, right? That's why I wanted to talk about it slowly with you over dinner. So now, what do you say? I'd like you to meet with me once again. I'll explain a bit more over dinner. I'm sorry, Liam. I can't have a meal or be a donor. What? What do you mean you can't? Your own sister is suffering from an illness, and you won't help her. That's right. What? I feel sorry for Camilla that she got sick, but I'm not that nice. I'm not interested in the person who betrayed her sister. I don't want to be a donor at all. Well then, tell her to take care of herself. What's the matter, you cold-hearted bitch? I cannot believe you would abandon me when I am ill. I'm your younger sister. Well, you sound much better than I expected. I'm not fine. I've been hospitalized since this month, and I'm fighting the disease every day. And yet you choose to abandon me. Seriously, I can't believe it. The donation is entirely voluntary. I don't see why you are blaming me. You're the worst, Olivia. You're messing with me like this because I took Liam away from you. That was three years ago. It doesn't matter now, right? What? Your sister's life is in danger. This is where you should behave like an adult. I don't care what you say. It's impossible. My husband was taken away from me by my own sister, and I had to cut ties with my family. You left me all alone, and now you want me to help you? Aren't you too selfish? You are the one who chose to cut ties with your family. Liam and I told you to get along. Dad also advised us to get along as a step family. It was your choice to refuse and cut ties with us, right? How am I supposed to get along with a traitorous sister and her husband? And instead of blaming you, our parents blamed me. They claimed it was my fault that I have been deceived. I had no choice but to cut ties with family members who were behaving in this manner. No, no, no! Dad was right. It's all your fault, and yet you keep playing the victim forever. Excuse me. I didn't take Liam away from you. I saved him. Liam desperately wanted to have a child, but you have been infertile for a long time, so I liberated him from you. Don't keep playing the victim. What exactly do you mean you saved him? What you did was nothing but cheating. Don't justify your insanity. But if you two had stayed married like that, Liam would have been dissatisfied because he couldn't have children. So you don't mind if your partner is unhappy as long as you're happy, huh? You were around forty at the time of the divorce. On the other hand, I am still in my twenties. I have plenty of chances to have children. But you have a serious illness right now. That is why I am receiving treatment. I'll be cured as long as I get a bone marrow transplant. I'll get well and have lots of babies. So you have to help me, Olivia. Absolutely not. Liam will be overjoyed if I recover and have children. Even though you and he are divorced, he remains a special person to you. Correct? Can't you see it as an opportunity to assist me in getting cured so that he can be happy? Impossible. So forget about me and find another donor as soon as possible. 
I am, but I can't find a compatible person. So that's why I'm asking you. It is said that blood-related parents and siblings have the highest compatibility percentage. Even so, the likelihood of a match is said to be one out of four. What? I had no idea the percentage rate was so low. My parents and my grandmother were not compatible, so I'm confident you'll be compatible. Probabilistically, I'm sure you can be my donor. I see. That's why you and Liam are working so hard to contact me. But I'm sorry to tell you this, but I can't do it. I'm not interested in giving you a bone marrow transplant. Will you stop being so stubborn? When I'm cured and have a child, she will be your niece, right? Or should I say, because I'm expecting a child with Liam, the baby will practically be yours. It's like I gave birth to her instead of you. What's with that logic? Is your brain disease getting worse? How can you say something so horrible to a sick person? Don't you want to see your loved one's child? No, I'm sure you want to see him. What? You always wanted kids too, right? Even so, you are now divorced, single, and around 40 years old. It's impossible for you to make a child at this point. That's why I say I can make your dream a reality. It's none of your business. I'll make my dream a reality on my own. Don't be so desperate and stubborn. It's absolutely impossible for you to have a baby now. Huh? When I'm well and have a child, I'll let you spend a lot of time with her. So I'd like to hear a nice response from you right now. You don't mind being a donor for your sweet sister, do you? You'll be sorry if you don't gain my favor now. I can't do that. I'm about to give birth. What? I'm tired of answering you, so this is the last time I'll do so. I will never be a donor. What's the name of it? A bone marrow bank? I hope they have a compatible donor for you. Wait a minute. What do you mean you're having a baby soon? Tell me. You are infertile, so it's impossible for you to have a baby. I mean, how can you be pregnant when you're single? I remarried last year. What? Did you get remarried? Then somehow we had a baby very quickly. I'm a little worried about having a baby at my age, but everything is going well so far. I thought I would never be able to have children, but you never know. What? What's going on? You never told me. I didn't know that. What do you mean you got remarried? I don't have to go around telling a family member with whom I cut ties that I remarried. Only a few of my friends know that I remarried. I don't think my relatives know, so it's no surprise you don't either. So you're pregnant? I was supposed to get pregnant as soon as I got better, and yet my divorced sister, who's around 40, is about to have a baby. Well then, good luck with your treatment. I'll do my best to give birth at the end of this month, too. Olivia, you finally had a child. Was it a boy or a girl? What? Liam? At the very least, you should have sent me a picture as soon as you gave birth to him. Your child is practically yours and mine. But you haven't contacted me at all, which is very disappointing. What do you mean by practically? My husband and I are the parents of the baby. I'm not going to show you pictures of him. Stop saying weird things. But if you and I reconcile and register as a family, he's ours, right? Am I saying something funny? Excuse me? Olivia, you know how much I want a child. I really want to have a child so badly. Of course I know that. You're a big kid lover, and above all, your parents have always wanted grandchildren. You want at least three, right? Yeah, that's right. 
That's why I remarried Camilla, despite knowing it was a bad idea to allow her to take me away from you. I really didn't want to do anything that would hurt you, but in order to have a child, I had no choice but to marry Camilla. Huh? And yet we can't have kids. In fact, Camilla is very sick. These days, I'm afraid of the pressure from my parents. My parents were always opposed to this marriage, and yet we can't have children. They nag me every day, asking me what is it that I really want. Unfortunately, I don't feel sorry for you at all. What? The whole point is that you pushed everyone around you for your own good, but nothing came of it. To me, it's just a self-centered man's confession. Yeah, well, maybe it is a confession. I regret divorcing you. If I had stayed married to you, then. Then I'd be right next to you and the kid. Why don't you leave your current husband and remarry me, Olivia? What? Let's raise the child as our child. I don't care about blood ties or anything. If you risk your life to give birth to him, I'm confident that I can love him. You've got to be kidding me. Do you really believe I'll accept it joyfully? Think about it calmly. I'm sure any guy who would marry someone like you at the age of forty has a low income, right? On the other hand, I work for a large corporation and make a good living. I also have a lot of life insurance on Camilla. You won't have to worry about money if you come back to me. I seriously don't know what to say. Sorry, but my husband is not only nice, but also very good at his job. He's never made it difficult for me financially. For the sake of our children, he even went to the trouble of building us a garden house in New York City. A house in New York City, and with a garden? Is your husband rich? That is why there is no point in getting back together with you. I've decided to create a loving home for us two and our children. So please do your best to assist Camilla. I beg you, Olivia. This is the most important favor I ask you. Please just perform the donor test for me. According to the results of today's exam, my numbers are even worse. If I don't receive a bone marrow transplant soon, the disease will eventually kill me. It's mental. A disease will never be able to defeat a shameless woman like you. So stay positive and do your best. All problems will be solved if you become a donor. Do you really want your own sister to die from this disease? It's totally okay for me. Live your life without regrets. What? How could you say such a thing to a sick person? Don't you have a heart, sister? Someone close to you is ill. How can you say such a terrible thing? Can you repeat what you just said to your husband? He's been pleading with me to get back together since last week. What? I've been extremely busy since the birth of my child, but he continues to contact me. I think I'm running out of patience. Wait a minute. What do you mean he wants you to get back together with him? Are you saying that Liam wants to remarry you? That's right. He stated that he has a lot of insurance on you. And that he will not cause me financial hardship. He keeps asking me to get back together and date him, no matter how much I refuse. Are you kidding me? Liam is putting that much money into my insurance? He's a terrible person, isn't he? His wife is ill, and he is going ahead with the plan. I'm curious if he has a heart. No, that's impossible. As his wife, I'm in such a weakened state. And he's requesting you for reconciliation. And what's with this insurance money? Come to think of it, Liam has been visiting me less frequently lately. He claims to be preoccupied with work, but could it be that he has lost interest in me? Rumor has it that he's attending a matchmaking party. A mutual acquaintance informed me that they had seen him. A matchmaking party? That's not true. You're telling me he's already switched from me to another woman? I can't believe this. I know. 
But Camilla, you have no right to criticize Liam, right? What? You forced him to change from your sister to you, and now you're furious because he's attempting to swap you? You're in no position to do such a thing. Oh, but it's. Don't you say that the person who is cheated on has a flaw? Before you get angry at Liam, you should think about what's wrong with you. What? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm doing my best to fight the disease. I want to have Liam's child when I get well. So why do you have to be so mean to me? Will you stop playing the victim? Huh? You know that Liam wants a child more than anything else, right? Is it okay if you're happy and the other person is unhappy? The least you can do as a wife is let him go. Why are you acting like this? You're being sarcastic. Oh, I'm glad you caught my sarcasm. Just to make sure, you're not going to get back together with Liam, are you? Of course not. I'm going to live happily with my husband and my beautiful child. I never want to have anything to do with that unfaithful man again. I'm relieved to hear that. If this is the case, I'll make Liam regret abandoning me. He has a lot of life insurance on me, huh? Then, to ensure that he is unable to pay the life insurance costs, I'm going to deplete all of his resources. What? If he thinks I'll just live a quiet life fighting my illness, he's mistaken. I'm not going to give Liam a happy ending. There is something I want to do before I die. With that, Camilla used the disease to her advantage and did whatever she pleased. She would leave the hospital and go to a nightclub to party. She also made an unexpected donation of several thousand dollars to welfare organizations. Her adrenaline is pumping, and she's living it up to take advantage of all of Liam's assets. Even the doctors are afraid of her. Saying that even though she is sick, she does not appear to be sick. Even though Liam tries to stop Camilla, he is too concerned about what others might think, so he just watches his balance fall. In the end, he is so trapped that he cannot even pay the life insurance cost. As a result, he approaches each parent, pleading with them to lend him money to cover their living expenses. By the way. I am blessed with a kind husband and a lovely child, and I am happy every day. I want to raise my child to be a child who can truly say thank you. That's enough, Megan. What? What's wrong? Megan, did you buy a branded bag again without my permission? Aren't you thinking about family as a wife? Um. Yeah, I bought it. But how do you know? It arrived just now. I was off work today, so I was home, and I got the delivery. I'm surprised. What? You opened my package without my permission? Even if we are married, I should have my own privacy. What? Even if I didn't open it. I could find out by checking the purchase history on the site. So it was a secret. It's not like that. But you're looking at my browser history without my permission. Invasion of privacy. You can do that. What privacy? Besides, I'm the one who registered the account with the shopping site. The credit card that you are using is my credit card too. You can just use it like that. I'm your wife, so it's okay for me to shop on my husband's account. No one say you can't. A little bit is fine, a little bit. But in your case, last week it was a three thousand dollars coat. The week before, a ten thousand dollar ring, and before that, a hundred thousand dollar vacation home. That's just not normal, is it? Other than that. You frequently go to a high-class restaurants like famous French places, aesthetics, spending lavishly at nightclubs. This is a lot of spending in just two months. 
It's hard to believe that this is the amount of money a housewife spends. You're being too lavish. Think about it a little. What? You're saying that now? You are the one who said I could buy a vacation house. Besides, I really wanted a new house. But I put out with you with a used house. Only the vacation house. You know, I wanted one too. So I said yes. But what do you mean I put up with you? What I'm trying to say is the amount of money you spent in just two months is just too much. It doesn't matter. You have more than enough money. You only live once. I want to live a lavish life and be happy. I can do that? My father left all this money for me. It's not money that I or Megan earned, right? It's not yours to spend as you want. Don't be so stingy. It's just a little bit. After all, it's one million dollars. Get it? You should look at the fact that you've already spent almost two hundred thousand dollars of that one million. Do you know how hard I have to work to earn that much? What? Even after deducting the purchase of the vacation home, the amount you've spent without permission is close to two hundred thousand dollars. That's too much, no matter how you think about it, isn't it? Besides, I told you that real estate isn't just bought and paid for. It needs maintenance. You can just keep using it like that, considering the future maintenance cost of the house. Oh my God! All the maintenance, upkeep, blah blah blah. You're so annoying. I will leave those annoying calculations to you. I'm not very good at math. <laughs> Also, who do you think you are? What? What do you mean? You don't understand? Think about it. The company you work for seems to be a business partner of the company my dad works for. So, so what? What happens if you upset the client? Even you understand that, don't you? You might not be able to do business with them in the future. What's that? That's enough. That's not even a threat. I can accept that about you. What? You're so cocky. Stop being cocky now. You will never be able to resist me. You will lose everything important to you. So I will do whatever I want. You? What kind of person are you? I can't. I've reached my limit. I can take it. What? What do you mean? Divorce me. What? <laughs> There's no way you can do such a thing. I don't care what you think. You can't do it. How can you be so chill? You don't think I'm serious? Did you forget what I said earlier? If you upset my mood, you will be in big trouble. So you can't divorce me. Get it? If you can do it, do it then. Suck it up. No way you could do it. <laughs> I'm serious. I will get the divorce papers from the court office later. Oh, you don't have to do that. There's an easy way now. You can just download it and print it. I see. You know a lot of things, huh? If you want to print it, just do it. Okay, I will do it. I will do whatever you want. I will print it out. I will fill in all my fields, and I will leave it on the table in the living room. And I want you to fill it out as soon as you get home. Okay. Okay. Whatever. I filled out the divorce papers. I will put it on the living room table. What? So that means you went back home. Yes, I am. Is there any problem? I just got home and I'm eating in my room. You know, why are you messaging me? We're in the same house. Why don't you just talk in person? Because you like that. I don't like it when you complain again. Oh, really? 
Well, if you already filled out the divorce papers, that's fine. You checked to make sure nothing was missing, right? You didn't miss anything, did you? It's on the table, so you can check it yourself. You can't even submit it. I will take the divorce papers, so just leave them on the table. Don't take it by mistake, okay? Okay. I'm going out again after I took a nap. I don't think I'll see you again. <laughs> what? Again? Where do you go every day? What? I'm having dinner with my famous friends at a three-star restaurant. Elegant, isn't it? Jesus. Even after all that, you still don't want to stop spending money. You really are. I'm truly disgusted with you. You too! Don't even think about going against me. How dare you talk to me like that? We can have a proper conversation. Whatever. I'm off to work. Okay. Make sure you earn your money for me. The paycheck is mine. <laughs> hey. Yo. Three weeks ago, there was an envelope in the living room with $2,000 in it. What was that $2,000? I mean, why don't you come back home? My account on the shopping site has been suspended. And the credit card is no longer active. The balance in a bank account, which was supposed to be $1 million, is zero. What's going on? Why? You got mad at me for spending $200,000, but you used up the remaining $800,000? What's with you? Telling people not to use it and then doing it yourself? You're saying one thing and doing the opposite all the time. The $2,000 in the envelope is almost gone too. Hey, answer me. Do you think you can go against me? It's absolutely impossible. I told you this before, didn't I? I mean, how many times do I have to tell you? Do you even have a brain? Hey! Hey! How long are you going to sulk? Answer me! If you can't answer, send me a message. Oh yeah, you took all the money. So, I had no choice but to loan $20,000. You're going to pay it back from your salary and bonus every month from now on. So, please keep that in mind. If you don't have enough money to live on, you should get a part-time job or something to increase your income. It's your fault entirely, not mine. So, let's get on with it. It's payday today. So, hurry up and give me everything. You will be in big trouble if you upset me. What are you talking about when we're already divorced? What? I'm sorry, I haven't replied since yesterday. I didn't do it on purpose. I was busy and didn't have time to look at my phone. What? Just when I thought you finally replied. What are you talking about? Are you dreaming? There's no way you have the guts to divorce me. I told you. You can't do that. If you have time for jokes, transfer your salary to my account. If I let you leave it in your account, you might use it without my permission again. I want to pay back the money I borrowed right away. Oh, that's right. You should go to the company and change your next paycheck to my account. That way, it will be easier for me to pay the $20,000 that I borrowed. I won't have to ask you for money every single time. And... I can manage your salary. No, I'm telling you, I don't have to do that. Why not? I've told you a million times, we're already divorced. I'm serious. I'm saying jokes like that are boring. It's not funny at all. It's not a joke you can tell. No, I'm not joking. I already filed for the divorce. I told you to leave it on the table. Didn't I? Huh? I also left $2,000 for the property division. 
the truth is, considering the money that you've spent, it's not just an offset. It's a significant negative amount. I don't even know if you'll be able to pay me back. Well, you were my wife. After all, I was merciful to you. I left you $2,000 as a last act of mercy for you, a housewife. Didn't you understand? What? What do you mean by property division? I put a note explaining all of this in the envelope with the money. I thought I wrote it down in great details, but you didn't see it? What? Note? I took all the money and threw everything else away. Oh yeah, you are that kind of person. Well, that's why. Our divorce was finalized now. No way! I was divorced? From your message the other day, $2,000 was spent in less than a month. No way. $20,000 in debt? 10 times the amount of property division. You should have just gone back to your parents' house like a normal person, instead of screwing up. Wait, you? What are you doing? Submitting the divorce papers? I didn't hear anything. You agreed to this divorce. There's a record of it in our conversation. You signed the divorce papers yourself, so I didn't do it on my own. That's because... I didn't think you'd actually do it. I mean, you don't know where you stand. My dad is an employee of the company you work for. How can you do that? You said that before. Is that a threat? What's the point? What? If someone in an important position in the company said that to me, I probably understand. Your dad. He's just a regular employee. How can a regular employee do anything to an employee of a business partner? What? Regular employee? Huh? I thought he was a sales manager last year. I don't know the details, but he got caught bullying his co-workers and was demoted. I heard that from a friend who works there. I bet he has a similar personality to you. What? What do you mean by that? Oh, maybe. Didn't you know that your mother left because of this and they're in the middle of divorce proceedings? Your parents' house is in big trouble now. No way. I didn't hear anything. Why didn't you tell me? I was told by both of them not to tell you because they said they would tell themselves. I went out of my way to keep quiet. I guess I ended up telling you. I feel sorry for your parents. What the hell is that? Well, that's the thing. We're strangers now. This is the last time I'm going to contact you. Let's just say a clean goodbye. Wait a minute. Give me the $300,000 right now. What? Why should I give you $300,000? You also took your dad's inheritance, which became our money, and used it without permission, didn't you? I had $200,000, but you had $800,000. That's impossible, isn't it? No, I didn't spend it. To be exact, I used $100,000 to buy a vacation home, so... $700,000. Huh? You knew the PIN number of my account. So, I thought it would be better to take the plunge and open another account and transfer the money. Now, there's $700,000 left in the new account. Well, it's only natural, isn't it? We are divorced now. Then, why don't you just give me the extra $300,000 that you owe me? What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. What do you mean? Only $2,000 for the property division? Even if we simply cut it in half, the remaining $300,000 should be mine. $350,000 to be exact. I'm not so stupid that I can do math about it. No. The inheritance doesn't count as property that was formed jointly during the marriage. 
All that money was inherited from my father. It wasn't our savings. What? I mean, it doesn't qualify as our money. It means it's not subject to property division. You didn't even know that? What? Oh, so you didn't know that? That's why you were spending it without a care in the world. I see. That's just like you. <laughs> no way. What? Um, wait a minute. Then, the $20,000 I owe now is... Just a debt. If you don't have enough money to pay back, you will just have to do your best to pay it on your own. Um, Hallie? Let's get back together. I forgive you for everything you've done. Get back together? Forgive me? Hmm, why? That's ridiculous. What is ridiculous? Before the forgiving, I'm the one who wanted a divorce, remember? But deep in your heart, you didn't want to divorce me. You didn't have a choice, right? I mean, as long as I don't spend all your money, right? I'll be waiting for you to print out the marriage certificate, honey. I'll have you fill it out right away. No way. No way I would do that. Why not? Do I have to tell you? You are not stupid, right? Then I don't need to explain. Do I? Well, let's just get from this conversation. No way. Oh yeah. Since you didn't read the note I put in the envelope, I will tell you now. The end of this month is the move out date for the apartment. If you don't pack up and leave quickly, you will be evicted. Okay? If you don't want to get sued, you better get ready quickly. What? There are only three days left. Why is that happening? I never heard anything about it. This place was in your mother's name. She's going to use the money from the sale of this condo to make up for the money you've spent. This way, I can maintain my father's honor. Your parents going to deduct it from your future inheritance and make sure you don't inherit the rest. No way. I mean, where are you right now? Come back here. I'm at my new place. You mean, you're out of here? You didn't notice my stuff was missing? Well, of course, you didn't care about me at all. Where did you move to? Very far away. I don't think I'll ever see you again. What? Does that mean you quit your job? What does that have to do with you? We're divorced. So, there's no need to tell you. That means you changed jobs. Tell me where you leave. No way. Oh, the vacation home was in my name, so I sold it. Oh, no! That's terrible! Well, that's all I wanted to say. Goodbye, stranger. Actually, due to a transfer at the company where I've been working for a long time, I had to move. So I didn't quit my job. When I reported my divorce to the company, I was told that a new department would be starting up where I could make use of my skills. So I received a transfer order to the head office on short notice. I received a large raise in salary, for which I am very grateful. It seems that company also took my personal life into consideration. If I revealed this to my ex-wife, she would surely attack me. So I let it pass without talking about it. I have no intention of telling her in the future either. So, my ex-wife, who has a debt of $20,000, went back to her parents' house where only her father was waiting for her. Surprisingly, this father, who had been bullying his co-workers, was being demanded for a total of $30,000 in compensation, and he ended up in debt. In other words, father and daughter together owe $50,000. After all the trouble, I heard that he got into some bad business and the two of them were arrested. It was one year after the divorce. I was surprised, but I guess they could have done it. Well, I wish them the best. See, 
friends. Long time no see. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So, you finally got in touch with me. I guess you're ready to pay me back. What? What do you mean? I'm talking about the $10,000 you took from me five years ago. After that, you disappeared, and now, all of a sudden, you text me. You're gonna pay me back with five years' interest, right? Oh, please! There's no way I can pay you back! I blew $5,000 of it at the casino. Do you know what that means? I'm broke! <laughs> you don't have any savings? Do you still go there? Believe it or not, I don't go anymore. Actually, I've been banned. What? The guy at the casino said they were having a high-stakes private game. So I grabbed $5,000 and went. Guess what? The bastard said, Don't tell me you only brought $5,000! I snapped and made a scene that night. Since then, I've been banned. That's it. Oh, okay. What have you been doing for the last five years? I thought you were still crazy about going there. Or you were working at a nightclub somewhere. <laughs> Listen! I'm married under common law, and I'm going to have a baby! <laughs> You've got to be kidding me! After I got banned, I had a fateful encounter! I've been living with him ever since! I'm expecting any time now! Wow, you've been living quite a life! Yeah... Um... Actually, I'm in big trouble! My due date is just around the corner, and we are thinking about making our marriage official. But he got fired from his part-time job at the convenience store. Seriously? That's why we are broke. We can't pay our rent, let alone afford to raise our child. All things considered, we are better off living with mom and dad. Can you help me with that? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. I don't even know where to start. Can you just help me? You can ask me questions later. I've been trying to get a hold of mom and dad, but they haven't answered my calls. I'm pretty sure they're still mad at me. Even if I go see them now, they probably won't let me in. I'm hoping you can be a peacemaker between us. Do you really think I'm going to say yes to that? You haven't paid me back. I'm having a baby girl who's gonna be your niece. She's gotta be worth more than $10,000. So, can't you just write off my debt? Anyway, call me when you've convinced them. Hi, is this Lolia, Karma's big sister? Have you spoken with your parents yet? I don't quite understand what's going on here. We've been asked to move out of our apartment by the end of this month. Can you please hurry up and speak to them? Who the hell is this? I'm Daniel, Carmen's fiancé. I'm gonna be your brother-in-law. Oh, you're Carmen's boyfriend. Carmen told me she borrowed $10,000 from you five years back. Can you please just forget about it? She's expecting now. You shouldn't be so upset. You're acting like a child. No matter what you say, what my sister did was stealing. I don't want to let a criminal into our house. How can you say such a mean things? Carmen is not a criminal. She's your family. Since you're a family, you should forgive each other. I don't consider her family anymore. It's not just the money I'm talking about. She not only sold my personal belongings without my permission, but she did something else too. She used to go crazy about going out to the casino. You have no idea how much trouble she's made. She's kicked her bad habit of going there. She's no longer the Carmen you remember. She's changed. You're such a cold-hearted sister. 
Don't you have any compassion? Why are you blaming me? Even as a family, it's a selfish thing to ask me to forgive her for everything she's done. She sold a couple of your things. What's the big deal? She stole a measly $10,000. You're the kind of person who thinks only about money. What? Carmen told me that. You work for a big company, right? You must make a ton and you must have saved up lots of money. Am I right? However, you're stingy and you hold a grudge. My salary has nothing to do with this whole thing. Yes, it does. We are unemployed, so we are suffering financially. You're financially stable. How come you don't want to help us? As it is, we can't officially get married. You should get your act together before you ask for help. You're Carmen's fiancé and the father of the child. I'm doing my best, but we still need your help. But you don't want to spend even a penny on us. You aren't helping us at all. I've never even met you, but I already don't like you. What a coincidence. You haven't made such a great impression either. Fine, we don't need your help. We are gonna convince your parents ourselves. We did it! We are moving in with you guys today. What? We did what we had to do get into the house. <laughs> you must be busy at work now. Mom and Dad are out, so it was great timing. Now we'll just wait for them to come home. Hold on a second. Did you guys break in? The bathroom window was open, so we came in. You must be kidding me. I see things have changed around here. It's been renovated. It's pretty stylish. It's gonna be great living here again. I'm sure our baby will be happy too. Carmen, you must leave now. You're trespassing. You just broke the law. What are you talking about? I came back to our parents' house, that's all. I hope mom and dad will come home soon. I bet they'll be surprised to see me back. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear they'll have a grandchild and then they'll welcome my new family. I'm coming home now. I was at headquarters on business, so I'm not too far from the house. I've got to get you out of there right away. Go ahead and try. Sorry, but you're the one who's gonna go. <laughs> There's no place for you here. What do you mean by that? It looks like you guys got rid of my room in the renovation. So, we'll be taking your room instead. In other words, you're gonna have to leave because there's no room. Huh? Daniel has already taken your stuff outside. If you're coming here, grab your stuff and go. You're joking. Wait, did you really move all the stuff out of the room? You already took it outside? Yep. That's exactly what we did. We got your room. Sorry, looks like we stole your room this time. <laughs> I guess I should tell you this. I moved out of that house three years ago. What? What a woman. You're giving me a headache. Hold on, you moved out three years ago? Are you saying the stuff we brought outside wasn't yours? Ah, I see. So, Mom and Dad are living here together, just the two of them. Gotcha. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Listen, Mom and Dad moved out three years ago, too. None of us lived there. What? We sold the house three years ago. You said it's been renovated. That means the new homeowner lives there. Wait a minute. 
Oh my god! Are you telling me somebody else actually lives here? Yep. You snuck into the house through the bathroom window, took stuff out of the house. You are a criminal. I can't believe it! Please tell me you're joking! I told you to get out of there immediately. Where do you live now? All of you moved out together, right? Do you live around here? We live in California. Huh? California? I got transferred there and they came along with me. Three years ago, I got an order to transfer to the branch on the West Coast. Mom and Dad were ready to retire and they wanted to go with me. Oh my God! What am I gonna do? We can't survive without you guys! Well, right now we gotta get out of this house! We have to bring the stuff back in and get out without leaving any trace! It's too late. I called the police. What? I'm so glad I was on a business trip to the company headquarters. The police will be arriving soon, so be prepared. Oh my god! Why did you call the police? You know, they'll take your cute little sister away! I call the police because I want them to take you away. Anyway, I gotta go. Do what the police tell you. Oh my god, sis! We can't stay in our hometown anymore! What a surprise! The young homeowners were your former classmates. It's a small world, isn't it? Do you understand how I felt when they gave us the stink eye? I wish they'd been complete strangers! I bet they will tell all of my other former classmates! So? They dropped the damage charges out of courtesy, didn't they? Make sure to transfer the $20,000 court settlement fee to them. I can't afford it! And I've been getting massive calls from my old friends demanding I pay them back too! My life is over! I was planning to keep a low profile when I moved back here! What? What do you mean, your old friends are demanding money? Did you steal from your friends too? No, I didn't! But I borrowed some money here and there and promised to pay them back! But, unfortunately, I haven't been able to. What? I borrowed a lot of money when I was addicted to the casino. I got small amounts from each one of them, but I borrowed from a lot of people. I think I owe roughly $30,000. Oh, and another $20,000 for the court fees. It adds up to $50,000. Don't forget to add what you owe me. So, it's up to $60,000. You know my situation! Please help me, sis! I'm begging you! Please lend us $50,000! Huh? I swear! I will pay you back for sure! So, please, please help me or... Can you ask mom and dad to help me? Please tell them I'll show them their adorable grandchild soon. So, can you ask them to lend me the money? Here's the message from mom and dad. In terms of getting married and giving birth, you can do whatever you want to do. However, we don't want to see you ever again. That's it. Oh my god! Mom and Dad were planning to go back to our hometown after they spent some time in California. But they're too embarrassed to go back now because of you. They're saying they'll break off relations with you. My due date is just around the corner and then I'll show them their beautiful grandchild. But they want to cut off relations with me? Anyway, good luck to you and your husband. Just like Mom and Dad, I don't want to speak to you ever again. Why don't you want to help us? We broke into the house because of you. You should have told us you've moved out. 
What? Not only that, you abandoned us. That's terrible. We didn't do anything wrong. We are the victims. I've had enough of you. Face reality. Shifting the blame won't change the situation at all. Playing the blame game won't reduce the amount of your debt, not even a penny. I know that, but I don't have $60,000. I've only ever worked part-time. I don't have any savings. I know that. Your parents have also cut themselves off from you. You have no parents, no one to rely on, no one to help you. How do you know that? My parents are a little concerned about who Carmen is going to marry. I contacted Carmen's friends and learned quite a lot. I investigated you. Seriously? They told me about your family situation. I heard that you are unemployed and living with your parents for 10 years. And your parents got sick and tired of supporting you, so they kicked you out. So what? Carmen was the one who accepted me even though I had some troubles. We both worked part-time and have been supporting each other. You're missing one important point. When you worked part-time, you stole your parents' bank book and lived off their money. Am I right? Oh my god! I called your parents. I told them everything I know about your situation with my family. And then they told me about you. Oh man! Did you really call my parents? I can't believe you also stole money from your family, just like Carmen. You two are a perfect couple. Um, did they say anything else? Did they say they will forget about the money? Did they say they want to meet Carmen? This is a message from your parents. We are sending you to a factory where you can live and work. That's what they said. A living? Factory? Your parents have a relative who runs one. They arranged for you guys to live and work there together. And the money you took from your parents will be deducted from your paycheck each month to pay them back. Are you kidding me? I asked your parents to set it up for Carmen to pay me back too. We'll make both of you pay off your debt. This sucks! It must be Uncle Roger's factory! You have a wonderful uncle. He's not great! He's an old fart! Every year he came to see us at Christmas, he did nothing but gave me a lecture about finding a job! He sounds like a nice guy who cares about his nephew. I don't want to work at his factory! He's so serious and stubborn! I don't get along with him. I told him he should give me some money for Christmas instead of lecturing me. He beat me bad for that one. You're a grown-up man, and you asked him to give you money at Christmas? How pathetic. It's terrible that a chunk of money will be deducted from a paycheck after we work so hard. You guys are so mean. We'll have a baby soon. It's unbelievable you're in that much debt. They will let you live and work at the factory and plus help you pay off your debt. You are lucky. But you could pay us all back in one payment right now. How's that sound? You're complaining about this and that. Don't be a child. Grow up. Uh. Guys, be more responsible. What goes around comes around. I've got an idea. If you have enough energy to keep bitching, why don't you pay us all back with interest? In that case, it'll easily go over $60,000. Hold on a second. Seriously, we can't pay interest. Please. Well then, just shut up and walk your ass off. You're miserable, you know that, right? Do you think you'll be a good father? Stop whining! 
Shut up your mouth. Work hard and pay us back. You have nothing else. You're right. I'll work my ass off and pay you back. Since Daniel's parents sent his son and Carmen to his uncle's factory, they've been working as living workers. I messaged his uncle Roger saying, Thank you so much for accepting my stupid sister. I regularly send local wines to his parents and uncle and ask them how the young couple are doing. They've been working diligently so far. They pay off their debt bit by bit and his uncle said, It seems like they've learned things the hard way. For the sake of their baby, I hope they will get their act together and be more responsible. Adrian, it's been a while. Yeah, hi, it's been a while. It's been about a year. Uh, Tess? Huh? You've become quite the big shot calling me by name right off the bat. No, I thought it was rude to call you Mrs. Johnson. You're not making any sense. You're still a rude person. Well, no matter what you call me, our relationship as a daughter-in-law and mother-in-law will never change. Huh? A wife listens to what her mother-in-law, the mother of her husband, says. Even if something is white, if I say it's black, it's black. Only when there is correct hierarchical relationship like that, the relationship between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law can be kept on good terms. Excuse me, Tess. Now let's get down to the point of why I contacted you, shall we? I'll go ahead, but I won't take no for an answer. Huh? I've decided to live with you starting today. Huh? What? Living together, you, you mean you and I? What else could I mean? I've already brought my stuff over, so you'll have to clean up. Oh, before you put the stuff in, clean the room thoroughly. I won't allow you to place my belongings in the dirty room. Oh, you're there already. I thought you would say no if I informed you in advance. Of course I would. Well, that's straight to the point. I told you that I won't take no for an answer, and you just ignored me and talked back. Of course I would talk back. Matt and I divorced half a month ago. Huh? I was planning to change the locks. I had to put it off due to a sudden business trip right after the divorce, but I didn't think you'd force yourself in this time. What are you talking about? Divorce? That's not what I heard. You haven't heard anything from Matt, have you? Because when Matt showed up at my house last week, he had a duplicate key to this house. I see. So, in other words, the number of duplicate keys has been increasing without my knowledge. I thought Matt gave them back to me when we divorced. I wonder who he was making them for. Well, there's no point in talking about that now. Well then, please leave that duplicate key and leave right away. Huh? That house was originally bought in my name. There's no reason for me to live with you. We're not related now. Oh, look what you're saying. You and Matt are divorced? Do you expect me to believe that? It's a fact, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I won't listen to such nonsense. You not only disobey my orders, but you try to deceive me with such a joke. No, I'm not joking. Shut up! What kind of attitude is that for a wife to refuse to live with me by telling such a lie? By the looks of things, it's doubtful that you even do your daily housework properly. I think you need to be thoroughly educated. I'm going to live with you from here on, and I'm going to train you old school, so brace yourself. I'm not his wife anymore. 
I told you I don't even live with him. Besides, this is Matt's house. And as his mother, it's as good as my house. So this is my son's and my house. As long as I, the mother-in-law, live with him, the daughter-in-law is the lowest position in the household. So I'm not his wife. In other words, you are as good as a housekeeper. Get back here within 10 minutes, clean the house and sort out my belongings. If you don't want to be kicked out, come back right away. I told you that the house was purchased in my name. I bought it when I was single, so it wasn't part of the divorce assets. Oh my, there's almost nothing in the fridge. There's almost nothing but condiments. You can't possibly feed your husband a satisfying meal like this. I can see that you usually slack off. Huh? Did you look in the fridge without permission? Since we're going to live together, it's only right that I take a look. I was going to give you a taste of my home cooking for starters. Adrian, pick up some groceries on your way home. I'm on a long business trip, so I just went and emptied the fridge. I won't listen to your excuses. Oh, and I've decided on the room behind the living room. Huh? The door was locked, so I had to break it open so you can fix it later. Wait a minute. That room? It was in the way of me moving my stuff in, so I had the contractor take away everything that was in there. You mean you threw away everything in the room? Yes, it's fine for a wife's personal belongings to be minimal. Since you weren't coming home anytime soon, I decluttered it for you. Now your room is clean and suitable for me to live in. There's still a little dust and trash, so you better come back and clean up every nook and cranny. In that room, there were all sorts of company-issued computers and photographic equipment. What? Company provided? Sometimes I work remotely when I work in-house. That's what this room was for. What are you doing? It's your fault for not quitting. Huh? I don't understand. If anything happens, you immediately say, work, work, work. And now you're in the middle of a business trip? It's no way for a wife to behave, not taking care of her husband, and is instead distracted by her work. What a loser. Please don't change the subject. This is a compensation issue. Compensation? You disposed of company-issued equipment without permission. You'll have to pay for it, won't you? There was some expensive equipment, so I'm sure it's going to be quite a bit of money. You're saying it's my fault? You just said it was your fault for not quitting your job. That's why it's so hard to get pregnant. I wonder when you will give birth to my grandchildren. I'm divorced. You can't expect me to do that. That again! Don't bring up the lie about divorce every second! It's true. I've been telling you all this time and you still don't believe me. You are so full of it! Since we're not getting anywhere, let me summarize. I believe that you will be billed for the cost of the company's equipment at a later date. What? Even if I estimate lightly, it should be at least $10,000. $10,000? Apart from that, I'll be back tomorrow after my business trip. Please repack your belongings for the move by then and get the hell out of my house. Tess, it seems you are still staying at my house. You even changed the locks. How brazen can you be? Just a moment, Adrian. You're sitting around. You're so stubborn and rude. That's a bit much for a wife. I live in my son's house. I'm part of this family. Rather, as the matriarch's mother, you, my daughter-in-law, must show me some respect. You're the lowest ranking person in the house, and you're so loud and whiny. I will educate you well from here on out. 
Get out or I'll call the police. Huh? You still don't believe me, but your son Matt and I are divorced. This is an unchangeable fact. As a matter of fact, his stuff is nowhere to be found in the house, right? Huh? Matt's stuff? You knew which room he was using, didn't you? Now, that room is empty. It's a completely empty space, but you haven't seen it yet. I thought my son should have some privacy. You don't care about my privacy, but you're so sweet to your son. Well, that's why you're sitting in a stranger's house without knowing what's going on, so to speak. It's laughable. It's true. Matt's room, there's really nothing. What on earth does that mean? If you really got divorced, I'd be the first to hear about it. I'm his mother. The truth is, Matt said he would tell you in his own time, so I kept quiet. I don't think it's going to end without an explanation under the circumstances, so I'm going to say it. What? The cause of my divorce from Matt was his affair. Cheating? He got back together with his ex-girlfriend from school. If you doubt it, I have the report from the investigation I ordered from the private detective agency, and I'm sure you can check with the municipal office to see if he's divorced or not. Oh no! Then where is Matt now? He's broke from paying me alimony, and he got fired from his job. It looks like he moved into his ex-girlfriend's apartment. Ex-girlfriend? You don't mean Fran? Oh, you know about his ex-girlfriend? That would make things easier. If you want to talk to Matt, please go there. Not that woman. What? That immoral slut? Oh, you know that too. Of course I do. In my hometown, there were a lot of parents unhappy that their sons were used. Huh? I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Then get back together quickly. Huh? They say cheating is a man's worth, and the other party is that toxic woman. It's outrageous that a woman like that should be his wife. You're better than her. If you remarry Matt right now, I'll forgive you for your rudeness. You don't have to forgive me. Cheating on your wife is a one-time offense. There's no way I'd ever get back together with him. If you're serious, you're an idiot. Even if it's a joke, it's a bad one. Well... So please get out of there. Please don't make me say it again. But, um, I've already cancelled the lease on the apartment that I lived in. Huh? I have nowhere to go. I left to live with Matt and you. Um... Tess, the police have arrived. Huh? Adrian! Hey! Where did you go? Why is there a family living here that I don't know at all? Oh, hi. It's been a month. That place is now rented out as a rental property. Rented? So you won't be back here anymore? Don't tell me you're in front of the house. Yes, but I've been in the apartment with Matt and Fran since after I was taken away by the police a month ago. Well, when I asked the two of them to cover the compensation your company charged me with, they suddenly moved out yesterday. They also said that they canceled the apartment contract. Um, I can't imagine, but are you going to ask to move in with me again? Could you please do that for me? You know that sharing a room you hear so much about these days. You know that kind of thing? You're too funny. I'm not joking, I'm serious. It's even more impossible. Why? Your ex-mother-in-law is on the street. Don't you think you can at least take care of her a little? No, I don't. What? Why not? As you said, it's just X. Besides, I'm living in a company dormitory now. Huh? So I can't do anything. 
Goodbye. Oh no, wait! After that, I immediately blocked her. I had left it as it was, just to keep an eye on her. Tess doesn't know where I work, and since the house and the conditions necessary for living together were no longer in place, I guess I'm safe for the time being. After that, Tess stormed into her ex-husband's parents' house, whom she divorced with more than a decade ago. Apparently, she wanted to get back together with her ex-husband and ask him to support her. I was surprised at the unexpected idea. But there, she found her ex-husband living with his second wife and their children, and she was once again taken away by the police. In the end, she was picked up by her strict brother, a person she really didn't want to be indebted to. She's now working under the supervision of her brother to pay for the reimbursement she was charged by my employer. What are we gonna do? Andrea, oh my God, we're in trouble! Martha, what happened? Our house was robbed! Huh? That's terrible. Did you report it to the police? Not yet, but before I do, I thought I'd check to see if you had any idea what happened. Me? Have any idea? Um, what's missing? Well, the things I noticed. First of all, the dishes are missing. Also, the contents of the closet. Above all, a bank book for an account with $30,000 is missing, along with the bank card. A bank book with $30,000? Does that ring a bell? Oh my God, as soon as you and Roy get divorced, robbers, for God's sake. I can't help but think it's someone who knew our family and wanted to take advantage of the situation. Hey, Andrea, you think so too, don't you? Um, Martha? Could it be that you're talking about the things I took with me? Oh no, so it was you after all. It was right when you left in the divorce, so I thought maybe you might be the one who tried to trick me. And bingo, it turned out to be true. What a nasty woman you are. It was a mistake to let someone like you in the house. No, what's wrong with me taking out my own stuff? What about the Meissen plates? Oh, those are my favorites. The Meissen dishes are mine because I bought them when I was single. What about the big floral dress and the alligator leather bag? I wanted to use them next time I go out. They're my clothes and bag, so it's only natural that I should take them, right? I'm rather surprised that you wanted to use them without permission. Then what about the $30,000 bank account? That's exactly the money I saved when I was single. It's a bank book in my name. It's not subject to property division in a divorce, so it's only natural that I should take it. What a brazen person. I wonder if you even have a heart. Listen to me, Andrea. Listen to me carefully. It's common sense that once you get married... You should give everything you own to the family. Moreover, this divorce is the result of your failure as a wife. As a way of apologizing, you should leave everything behind. It's not too late to return the money, so come and return it right away. If you return it today, I will not report you to the police. I never agreed to that when I got married or divorced. You understand that the law takes precedence over your own meaningless rules, right? Call the police. Do whatever you want. I don't think they will take you seriously. Well, how dare you insult me, even though I'm your ex-husband's mother? That's enough. I understand. When Roy comes home, I'll show him these messages and we'll take measures to deal with it. You are not only a sneaky thief, but you are also a rude person to your superiors. It's unforgivable. Naturally, I'll have to file a police report as well. You better brace yourself. Excuse me, Martha. May I have a word? 
What? You're sorry? In the apartment where you are now, the one where Roy and I used to live? Yes, but so what? Why would you be able to get in? I borrowed the key from Roy's key case and had a friend who knows a locksmith make a duplicate key. Then could it be that I felt things in the house were moving from time to time or that my cosmetics seemed to be running out fast because you had entered the house without our knowledge? It's my son's house. It's only natural that I should have a key. I don't like that kind of thing. I mean, going into a stranger's house without permission? That's a more serious matter to be reported. Do you understand? Don't change the subject. My son's house is like his parents' house. It doesn't matter if you call the police. If you think you can call the police, go ahead and do it. I think you have it all wrong. The apartment was rented in my name when I was single. I only continued to live there after my marriage to Roy. It is not your son's house. I really can't call the police. I think you're the one who's going to be arrested for trespassing. Oh gosh, how many times do I have to tell you, once a wife is married, she is supposed to give everything she has to her family, and that includes this apartment. Therefore, from today, this apartment belongs to Roy. I live here with Roy. It is so sad to be alone, isn't it? Are you reading this message correctly? The apartment is in my name. In other words, it's a lease. The landlord is the original owner, so I can't just go and give it to Roy. There you go again with the trivial details. Oh well, I'm sure Roy himself would like to live with me. No matter what the stupid wife says, I will live here with Roy. Roy will be leaving tomorrow. Huh? The cancellation details have already been completed, so you can only live there until tomorrow. Roy is allowed to come in and out of the room because he has packing to do, but you are out of the question. Please leave immediately. You! Enough of this! You should know your place as a wife. Our divorce is final. I am not his wife. I'll say it again. Please leave us now. <coughs> Answer, Adrian! In the end, I didn't even call the police. During this message, I called my father-in-law to pick up my mother-in-law. Now here's the story. This divorce was actually Roy's idea. My mother-in-law is still very attached to her son and is also very abusive towards me. In order to get out of the situation, we temporarily divorced and moved to a new house on different days. My mother-in-law's breaking into the apartment was an accident that occurred during the execution of this operation. When my father-in-law went to collect my mother-in-law, she was sitting in the middle of the room with her large amount of luggage. It seems that she was serious when she said she was going to live with Roy. After that, we took all the necessary measures to prevent the new address from being discovered, and the move was completed without incident. It is a secret, of course, that Roy will take my family name after our marriage, LOL. I'm leaving you. I can't believe you were married. I can't believe it. Molly, wait a minute. Don't be deceived. <laughs> What do you mean deceived? You're dating me when you have a wife, right? She introduced herself as your wife. You must have been surprised. Really, I'm sorry about you being startled. That's that girl I told you about. The girl who was stalking me back home. I thought it was over when I got transferred. I didn't think she'd come follow me all the way over here. She's a little crazy. She just called herself my wife. You don't need to believe her. I see. That woman, Rebecca, was your stalker. Yes, that's right. I'm really in a bind. Oh, don't worry. That stalker girl is gone. 
I'll protect you, don't worry. Where are you? I'll go get you. No, thanks. I got a room at a hotel. I'll stay there tonight. Don't be silly. I said I'll pick you up. The hotel in front of the airport, right? West entrance, east entrance. Nope. I'll take the bus. Get off at another stop and stay there. Uh, okay, it's a little far, but okay, I'll go. Where's the bus stop? Tell me, I'll be right there. Don't come. Why not? You still don't get it? Huh? What? I know everything. Huh? You know? Don't tell me you believe what she says. She's crazy. She just calls herself my wife or something. Of course I'm right. Right? No. I met your wife in your apartment and we had a long talk, face to face. What? Were you okay? She didn't hurt you. That woman. My precious Molly. Just hear me out. You know what? When you told me about the stalker woman before, you said she was a cunning bitch, quick to lose her temper, and doesn't listen to anyone, right? But when I actually talked to her, she wasn't like that at all. On the contrary, she had all her identification, proof that you were married, etc. She told me to calm down and offered to talk about it. Then I was able to calm down and talk. Now I know everything you're trying to hide. Of course, that's her plan. She made up all that evidence. It's fake. Don't be fooled. Anyway, she's cunning. I don't think it's called cunning. I think it's called calm, collected and clear-headed. Oh my god, she's brainwashed you. You still say that, lol? Ma'am, it's not a coincidence that you ran into me. Huh? She found out from a tip from an acquaintance that you and I were living together, so she hired a private detective. Private detective? Did you say who the tip was from? There's no way she would tell me under the circumstances. So she did her research and here we are today. Because of that, I now understand that the transfer you're talking about is to leave your wife behind in your hometown and move out on your own. I now have a clear understanding of the situation. Your wife is a smart woman who doesn't deserve a moron like you. Wait a minute, Molly, that's... Also, she also knew that you lied to me about being single. Huh? So, after confronting you with the truth, it seems she came during the time when... Only I would be there to confirm what I wanted to do from that point. Therefore, even though we can call it a meeting between me and your wife, to be precise, things just unfolded as your wife had planned. Oh my god. But if you women talked it out, that's fine, right? I never said it was resolved through discussion. We were accompanied by your wife's lawyer. We're going to take the appropriate action from this point, and we're going to settle the matter. Lawyer? Hey, Molly. I may have told you I'm single. I lied out of love because I wanted to marry you. It's because I love you. You understand, won't you, sweet Molly? That's enough. I understand. I'm glad you understand, Molly. You are the best. I'll take you over my wife any time. She's so mean. She'd go and get a private detective. You're all I've got. I didn't know you were that stupid. What? What kind of a lie is love? If you're married, you're supposed to put an end to your marriage first and then start a relationship with another woman. What you are doing is disgusting as a human being. And I was forced to have an affair without my knowledge. It's not a joke. But you know, we were dating on the premise of marriage, right? I even met your parents. If that woman hadn't stormed in, we would have gotten married, right? That's right. In other words, you even committed marriage fraud. What? Why would I do that? You made me put down a payment of $5,000 on your own car. What? Because 
if we got married, we'd be using money as a couple and you'd be driving the car. Are you seriously out of your mind? I can't believe you would have the nerve to marry me under these circumstances. I'm not going to talk to my parents and get a lawyer. I'll ask you to make contact through my lawyer in the future. Oh, why? You love me, right? Then whether I have a wife or not, as long as you love me, there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, say something. Huh? What's this? It means that all of these message screen caps have already been sent to your wife, Rebecca. I'll tell you now, even if you divorce Rebecca, I'm not going to marry you. <laughs> That's enough. I hate dishonest people. Immediately after this, I blocked Miles. Thereafter, I left it to a lawyer. Anyway, I told him through my lawyer that there was no way I could marry a man who would betray his wife. But he insisted that it was a trivial matter for two people who love each other. After the conversation was over, Miles' parents came to me, apologized, and gave me a refund of $5,000 plus compensation. Next, Miles' divorce from his wife was finalized. He started stalking me, saying that now he could marry me. I went to the lawyer again and put a restraining order on him. And finally, I had peace. It was all so tiring. He is now in the middle of being forced to quit his job and sent to a church of an acquaintance where he is going to be rehabilitated for his bad temper. Austin, divorce me right away. Huh? Casey? I don't need someone like you anymore. You low-income trash. Divorce, divorce, divorce is the only way. Hey, calm down. What's the matter with you? I told you. I'm divorcing you. Can you at least tell me why? It's so abrupt. I'm confused. I've been telling you for a while now. You're a low-income bum. Don't tell me you don't know why. Because I'm unemployed? That's right. You know what I'm talking about. You were working for an exploitive company with low pay. It's been six months since you quit, and you still haven't tried to get a new job? You've gotten a taste of living off my high income as an employee of a major company. What is a man supposed to do if he's not the breadwinner of the family? The reason I left my job was because I got sick, so it's no wonder. You've recovered completely, but you're not looking for a job. I'm not looking for a job. I'm preparing to start my own business. Thanks to the Labour Bureau's help, I've been able to get my unpaid overtime and severance pay. I had no time to spend money in the first place, so I have a good amount of savings. I told you, we'd be okay financially for a while. I'm sure I've explained it to you many times. That's it. There. That's not good enough. That? You're too soft-hearted. You were working in the sweatshop and your bosses were pushing you to do even more work. That's why you broke down and were forced to quit. I know, that's something I should reflect on, but... You're such a social weakling. You starting your own business. Don't make me laugh. I'm only losing money by being with someone like you. There's no point in staying married to a husband you know will fail. I've decided I won't be tricked anymore. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm trying to change who I used to be. Low-income scumbags are cocky. I'd really like to ask for alimony, but I don't think you have that kind of money right now. I'll just take all of our joint savings and be satisfied with that. Sign the divorce papers I left in the living room and get them to the courthouse. You don't have any objections, do you? Huh? What do you mean divorce papers? You're going to divorce me right now? Of course I am. If you don't get on with it, you never know when it's going to be a problem. 
I left the apartment while you were out all morning playing around. I really wanted you to leave, but the apartment is in your name. I had no choice but to move out. Well, I can see a future where you'll be forced to leave because you can't pay the rent now. Wait a minute. Let's calm down and discuss this properly. No, I don't want to. Being married to a low-income, trashy husband is nothing but hell. Goodbye. At best, live like a weak man who was abandoned by his wife and live a poor life. Austin, it's been three years. I hope you've reflected on your past by now. You did, didn't you? I thought it was time for you to repent your foolishness and come to me for help. So, I've been kind enough to contact you. How kind of me. Who are you? Huh? Hi, it's Casey. Your wife? I don't have a wife with that name. You've got the wrong person. You're being so tough again. What do you want? You haven't contacted me even once in the three years since our divorce. I thought maybe you were still living at the bottom of the heap and were embarrassed and stubborn. I wonder what park you are homeless in. I'm sure you're living a very poor life. That's why I called you. I see. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Well, I'll get back to talking about you. No, thank you. What? You're still stubborn. You're the one who's in trouble because you can't get back with me. The one who makes a lot of money. It's time for you to stop being so stubborn and be honest. I'm just being honest about my feelings. Huh? You know what? I know you haven't changed much since our divorce three years ago. If I'm not mistaken, you're probably making less money than before. You don't even live in a decent house, do you? What makes you think that? I saw you on a street downtown. That empty store over there is where the popular cafeteria is going to open its third branch, right? Was that interior work? You were working there in a dirty t-shirt and jeans, right? Oh, you saw me. Yeah, that was me. You were painting the walls. So are you working part-time as a painter or something? You know, it's a bottom-of-the-barrel kind of job. Don't make fun of painters. Well, <laughs> well, you've just been told the truth and you're all red in the face. Not me. It's just really rude to painters. I'm not a painter and that's not a part-time job. It's my cafe and I painted it myself with passion. What's that, LOL? Well, that's whatever. So, where do you live now? Why? I just decided to get back together with you. Did you read the text message? I never said I agreed to get back together with you. Oh my. What else could your response be other than yes? You know that if you remarry me with a high income, your life will be stable, right? I am the only woman who would marry low-income trash like you. I'll go to your place with a marriage certificate, so tell me where you live. Or are you so poor that you don't have a house? If you were homeless, you'd want to get back together with me, wouldn't you? <laughs> LOL. Casey, oh you... You say high income, high income. Four hours a day, four or five times a week, 11 bucks an hour. Huh? And I heard you're not working more than one job at the moment. How is that high income? What? What are you talking about? I'm still an employee of a major company with a high income. I'm the envy of all career women. No, you're not. Just two weeks ago, your relationship with your married boss got found out. You couldn't stay at the company, so you voluntarily resigned. You're working part-time now. I know. Huh? Wait, why? How do you know? You haven't figured it out yet? I mean, do you even know the name of your own employer? Working with an attitude like that, no matter how much of a part-timer you are, it's appalling. Huh? What, you're just trying to show off? Then I'll tell you. Who the hell do you think you are talking like that? 
when you are working for me and my wife. What? What are you talking about? And by wife? How can you have a wife if you're a low-income trash? I'm already married, and I'm the boss now. What? I own the cafeteria where you started working part time the other day. Huh? A few months after you and I divorced, I successfully opened the first cafeteria. So now I'm the president and manager of the first store. And the person who became my wife was one of the opening staff there. Now she's the manager of the second store where you are now. Huh? Wait a minute. That female manager is your second wife? That's what I meant. We got married three months ago. What the hell? That's way too coincidental. It's a really great coincidence, isn't it? I've left it up to my wife to interview and hire a new part timer for the second restaurant. But the day before yesterday, she told me that she hired a new part timer, and it was you. I was so surprised, and then I found out through some contacts why you left your last job. Really? What's going on? My wife didn't know that the new part timer was her husband's ex wife, so she hired you. When she heard about it from me, she just looked shocked and appalled. I'm surprised too. I didn't know you were running a cafe, and that you had the talent to expand to a third location. If you were planning to become the president, why didn't you tell me? I told you that I was preparing to start my own business. But when I tried to explain to you what I wanted to do, you said you didn't understand what I was trying to explain. You said it was pointless to ask me because I wouldn't succeed anyway. You wouldn't listen to me at all. Well, um. Well, let's not talk about that. I've decided to let you work here for a while, just to see how it goes. If you don't feel comfortable, you can quit. If you're willing to separate your work and private life, I don't mind at all if you keep working here. What are you going to do? Of course, I'm going to quit. I can't imagine being used by you and your wife. It would be such a humiliating thing to do. Yes, I get it. Damn it! I thought I could work at a popular cafe, but because of you, I've wasted my time. If you had checked the president's greeting on the homepage, you would have figured it out. Didn't you check that before you applied? Oh well, I'm sorry for taking up your time. <laughs> Give me a break. What is the certified male? What do you think you're doing? Did you get it? Well, it's just what it says. You want me to pay alimony? What reason would there be for alimony? About the infidelity with your boss, which we talked about the other day. What? You were having a relationship all the way back from when we were still married. I found out from the evidence I gathered. No way. Now that I know, it's possible to file for alimony even now. I'm going to make sure it gets done. Oh no, my boss's wife wants me to pay compensation too, and I've been fired from my job. I was just wondering how I was going to make ends meet, and now you're adding on another layer. Don't you feel sorry for me? I'm sorry. You'll have to go through a lawyer for your side of the story. Huh? Well then, I'll leave you to it. My ex-wife was supposed to be excellent at her job, but I guess you could say she has a personality problem. However, she had good looks on the outside, so my present wife was easily fooled during the interview. Casey was in a hurry to get back with me because she was fired from her job. And then she remembered me. Even with a low income, she thought I must have saved up some money and didn't have time to spend it when I was working for that bad company. If I were thinking of starting a business, I must have a good amount of money. She was so full of expectation that she thought she would be the president's wife if she had succeeded. But no way, it backfired. As for me, I was relieved. 
the amount of compensation she has to pay has been further increased. Right now, it seems like she's working tirelessly, mainly focusing on jobs where she can earn money, often juggling multiple jobs every day. Kate, is that story for real? It's so funny! Helen, what story? I don't understand why you suddenly text me laughing so hard. It could only be one thing, right? I was a little surprised to hear about what you've been up to. Is it true you're dating Toby? Oh, yeah. It's been about a year and a half now. So, it's true! I'm surprised that it's been going on longer than I thought. Um, what's up with Toby? He's my ex-boyfriend, right? Yeah, that was five or six years ago when we were in college. Oh, you knew about him. I thought you had forgotten about him. How can you date your friend's ex-boyfriend? I'm amused by your brazenness going out with other people's ex. Don't talk like that. It's just that I started dating someone who happened to be my friend's ex. Even you once dated the ex-boyfriend of someone we know. Oh, I did? Let's not talk about it anyway, since it's not going anywhere. It won't do either of us any good. Ah, oh, okay. So? Huh? You seemed pretty surprised when you found out I was going out with Toby. Was it important enough to text me? Because, you know, it's that Toby. That? I've seen his parents' house. His parents' house? It's a one-story house, very shabby. Oh, that place. So, you've seen it? You're so brave not to break up after seeing it. Not only have I seen it, I've been there a few times. I mean, that's not Toby's parents' house. It's a rental place that Toby rents. Oh, he's renting it? You mean he's renting it to live in alone? Yeah, that's right. I see. Living alone usually means renting an apartment. But since his hobby is bodybuilding, he looked for a place where he could do it without worrying about the noise of dropping the weights, and that's where he ended up. He chose a place that is just outside of downtown so that he can reach his goal of 10,000 steps a day, so the rent is not much different from renting an apartment downtown. He's next to me right now and just told me that. I guess he's still a muscle head, huh? So you're with him now. We are on a date. Oh my, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. No, it's okay. I'm fine. Since Toby lives in a shabby house, he probably wouldn't take you anywhere worthwhile on a date anyway. It wouldn't matter if we were in college. But it's tough to go on a date at the park as an adult, isn't it? Oh, me too. I have a date with my boyfriend now. He's a hot guy who is nothing compared to a low-level guy like Toby. We are going out to dinner tonight at a fancy restaurant with a great view. Wow, that's great. See you later. Hey, Kate. Are you seriously going to continue going out with Toby? What? Why? A man with no future like that. His salary isn't that much, right? Well, it's fine if I continue to work as before. I like working too. I guess I never really cared. What? It's so sad that you can't be a housewife. You're so insistent about liking to work. Compared to that, my boyfriend is a handsome hot man with an annual income of $200,000. I remember your dream was to marry into wealth. That's right. I'll tell you now, that's the reason why Toby and I broke up. Is that so? Let's go back to what we talked about today. Toby is poor, right? 
I went out with him in college because he had good grades and I was hoping he'd be a good earner. But after job hunting, he got a job offer from a small company. I realized that people who are born poor will always be poor. You know what? I work for the same company as Toby. The situation is very different between a man who has to provide for a woman and a woman who has to be supported, isn't it? I don't think it's always like that. Yeah, but from what I heard today, he's still living in that shabby house even after he got a job, right? I broke up with him because he has no future in that sense. I wouldn't want to use that dump even if it were a warehouse. It was a good decision to break up with him. Money isn't everything. Toby likes that house too. That's why he's been living there all these years. Besides, I'm in a relationship with Toby because I'm attracted to his personality. Hmm. Well, that's okay. The happiest thing for a woman is to marry a high achiever and become a housewife. You've given up on that and now your life is all over. I wouldn't stop working even if I married someone with money. I'm not trying to put down stay-at-home housewives, but women who like to work, it's not so strange. Yes, yes, you're a sore loser. Bye-bye then. Kate, is this a good time? Yeah, sure. We're planning to go look for a place to rent together. Yes? If we are gonna do that, why don't we just buy a house? Huh? Buying a house? I wonder if that's a good idea. According to the boss, after we get married, we'll be assigned to departments that require business trips but no transfers. Even if we have to move, if we own a house, we can rent it out and make some income. Yeah, well, I think it's understandable. But? Um, I'm not worried about moving or anything. I'm talking about the premise of it in the first place. Huh? I'm sorry if this offends you, but it's important, so I'll say it. Yeah, that's fine. You can say whatever you want. Thank you. Well, to be honest, neither of us have the best paying jobs. Of course, it's enough to get by, but when it comes to buying a house, I think it would be better to save up for a down payment at least. Uh, oh. Huh? I'm sorry, did I offend you? But I have to be clear about this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not angry. I spoke in the wrong order. Oh, what? I already have the money to buy the house. Oh, really? It's spread out over several accounts, and there's about $3 million in total, so I can pay in cash in one lump sum from that. Three? What? Oh, I was so surprised I hit enter too soon. <laughs> You're careless. Which one of us is careless? Hmm? I've never heard of anyone having such a tremendous amount of money before. What kind of money is it? It's not a lottery ticket, is it? It's so much money, I can't believe it, and my heart is pounding. Oh, sorry. I was gonna tell you about it one of these days, but I thought it was a funny way to start. I see. You are trying to talk about it. I'm sorry I startled you. But it's a long story, and I don't think I can tell it all in one text. So, I'll just give you the gist of it. Okay, tell me. Well, let's see. The reason I have the money to buy the house is... My grandfather on my mother's side suddenly saw I had talent or something. When I was a college student, he gifted me some of his assets and real estate while he was alive. I started investing it, and it seemed to suit me. It became fun, and I did a lot of things with it. I found myself with three million dollars. Wow, you must really have a talent. 
I was surprised too. I made a promise to my grandfather about this. Never talk about money with anyone unless you really trust them. Keep your job. Maintain a standard of living that allows you to make ends meet within your paycheck. Do not touch the money you have in your portfolio except in case of an emergency. I'm still following those rules. I see. You seem like a laid-back, relaxed, muscle-bound guy, so it's surprising that you have such a talent. I have an image of someone with talent in asset management as someone who wears glasses, a suit, and has parted hair. Am I being this surprised? I'm just saying what I think of you. If anything, I'm complimenting you, you know? I like the relaxed Toby more than the stiff-looking guy. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I'm still managing my assets. After marriage, I'm planning to invest within a reasonable range, and I was going to share the information with you. I don't know much about asset management, so I'll probably leave it all up to you. If an amateur like me got involved, I'm afraid I'd end up losing the assets that you have created. The main purpose of this is to let you know that we have a reserve for emergencies. I just need you to know that I'm doing this. You're very similar to me in a financial sense. You're very prudent with your money and have good common sense. I thought you would be one of the people my grandfather would trust. That's why I decided to tell you. Well, thank you. I'm glad you did. Well, I'll explain it to you again next weekend when I have all the proper documents. And then we'll talk about the new place. Okay, I got it. Hey, hey, hey! What is it with you, Kate? Give me a proper explanation. What? What are you talking about? Of course, it's the house! The house! There was a beautiful house that looked like a designer property built near my friend's apartment! Toby went inside! What's going on? Is everything okay? What? I can't believe you bought a house with Toby's cheap monthly salary! Kate, aren't you being pushed around by the muscle head? Are you okay? Well, we are thinking about the future, so we are fine financially. We are thinking about things as a couple. You don't need to worry about us. Hmm, is that so? Well, never mind. See ya! Toby, long time no see! Hi, this is Helen! <coughs> What is it now? I have no reason to talk to you. Don't say that! We are friends, aren't we? What the hell are you talking about when you say we are friends? When I was in college, you mistook the house I rented to live alone in for my parents' house and left me. At least we are not the kind of friends who put heart marks at the end of words. I think you've got a wrong guy. No, I don't! I'm not mistaking you for someone else. I'm talking to you. I'm sorry for what I did to you. I was so blind. I'm so sick of it. The boyfriend I was dating was in debt. I thought he made $200,000 a year, but he said the sum of his parents and his own debts was $200,000. Huh, so? You know what? I've broken up with that worthless guy. I want to get back together with you. Aren't you happy? What? You built a house, didn't you? Your wealthy grandfather built it for you, didn't he? What? Why would he do that? You don't have to pretend anymore. I did some premarital research on you. And then it seems that your grandfather was a wealthy man. 
You yourself are a man of small means. But you're in a position to get your grandfather's inheritance eventually, right? You have about three million in savings. Do you know how long it's been since we broke up? You lived in a run-down house, even though you were a rich kid. Of course, I would misunderstand. If I had known you had three million dollars in savings, I never would have broken up with you. Well, now that that's settled, I'll marry you right now. Toby, I heard you were very sad when I broke up with you. You still love me, don't you? Huh? I'm in front of your new house. I brought a marriage certificate. I'm already married. What? You know, I've been dating Kate for a long time, right? But I'm a better woman than her. You couldn't forget me, could you? You were very depressed after you were rejected by me, right? I was depressed because you made fun of the house I liked and rented and called me poor. I hated myself for dating a woman like that. Do you know what the difference in values is? Huh? Kate and I have very similar values. Even if we have money, we don't spend it recklessly. Rather, I don't understand your nerve to spend as much as you have. You can't be happy being married to someone who thinks exactly the opposite of you. In the first place, I'm not gonna use my money to pay for the debt you incurred. What? How do you know about my debt? I knew it. Huh? What do you mean, I knew it? I heard from Kate that you were spending money carelessly, so I'm sorry I just said that to trick you. Huh? It seems like I hit a nerve, huh? When I was a college student, I had a relationship with you without knowing it. It's a complete dark history for me. Marrying you would be a joke. Kate, I'm sorry. Toby will live with me. From today onwards, Toby's wife is me and you're out. What? I moved my stuff into Toby's new house. He was so rude to me yesterday, saying all kinds of things to me like he was rejecting me. But when I went there to give it one last try to be his new wife, I saw a sign in the living room that said, Welcome! Expensive wine and fine cheese and my favorite hors d'oeuvres. I guess he couldn't forget how attractive I am. Well, it's true that I'm a better woman than you are. Uh, Helen? He was expecting my arrival and had a surprise for me. It was Toby's fault that the door was locked, so I had no choice but to break the window and enter through the backyard. Oh, I'm so loved. Um, I'm sorry for you, but he's mine. So sorry. Toby and I are preparing dinner at our new house right now. What? What are you talking about? There's no one at home. Where are you? Where? A two-story white house near the market. That's not our house. What? Oh, I see. You saw Toby go in there before, so you must have misunderstood, right? Misunderstood? Huh? What do you mean? Isn't this Toby's house? He went there because he knew the owner of the house. What? He was just there to help out when he moved in. Then, this welcome... Oh, by the way, he's moving in with his new wife today. Oh, shit! What? Someone just came home! It seems there was a big commotion at the wrong house after that. Of course there would be. The owner of the house was so excited to come home with his wife, who was going to live with him from that day, only to find a woman he didn't know. 
Toby quickly contacted him to avoid any unnecessary trouble. The vintage wine for his wife was already drunk and empty. Helen, who was trespassing, was taken into custody by the police. She was taken away crying. Later, they charged Helen $3,000 for the wine and the broken window. This is how her parents found out about the $30,000 debt she had. She is now employed by a civil engineering company as a live-in employee and getting counseling while paying back her debts. The other day, she contacted me in tears, so I blocked her and refused to receive her calls and said bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.